Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote about an interesting malicious Python script. He compares it to a rubber ducky. If you're not familiar with rubber ducky, it's a USB stick that simulates a keyboard. Rubber ducky can be programmed to send keystrokes to a victim's system and then executing malicious scripts. So you would plug it in claiming it to be a memory stick, but it will actually then execute malicious code. Similarly, this Python script uses an auto GUI library intended to automate interactions with graphical user interfaces. The script Xavier found uses this module to simulate the command R keystroke to launch command.exe a terminal and will then send keystrokes for a PowerShell one-liner to command.exe to connect to a server awaiting additional commands. Of course, this works and question always is, uh, why would an attacker go through the trouble uh, to write a script like this? Most likely they're trying to obfuscate the code so it's not really going to get detected by anti-malware and the low virus total score that this script has appears to validate that decision so far. And Apple today released its usual surprise update for all of its operating systems. Apple, of course, doesn't have a scheduled patch day and also does not typically pre-announce these kind of updates. The reason they always update everything at the same time is that many of these vulnerabilities in their 70 being addressed by these updates do affect multiple operating systems. There are no what I would call super critical or patch now vulnerabilities addressed at this time, but I believe the improvements to TCC may patch issues that have been discussed publicly already, and I think I mentioned them last week if I remember correctly. So there may be something that's already known out there. Apple's descriptions of their updates are always very brief, and they didn't point out that anything is already exploited in the wild. As usual, it is an all or nothing update, so you don't get to pick which vulnerabilities to patch. As there is nothing that requires a patch now designation, I would apply these patches in line with your normal patch procedures. And Adlation today released an update for its Questions for Confluence app. This is an optional part to Confluence and the feature needs to be enabled for you to be vulnerable. But when enabled, the app creates a Confluence user with the username Disabled System User. Despite the name, the user is not disabled. To make things work, it's not just enabled, but it's also created with a hard-coded password, and it's added to the Confluence users group. This uh, does allow this user to view and edit non-restricted pages in Confluence, with Confluence being often used, of course, to manage software development. An attacker with access to this user could use this access to then learn about what software is under development, various issues with the software, or maybe even affect development decisions. So essentially your classic uh, supply chain attack. To check if you're affected, uh, verify if the disabled system user user exists. Don't just check if Confluence questions is enabled or not, because it's possible that you installed it in the past, then later removed or disabled it, which will not necessarily disable uh, this uh, disabled system user. So check the user, make sure it's either not there or it's actually disabled and check with Confluence's advisory for additional details. And Sykesell published an advisory notifying users of its firewalls of two vulnerabilities. The local privilege escalation and an 
authenticated directory traversal vulnerability are being uh, fixed here. Not as bad as the simple remote code execution we had in these products back in May, but this is sort of one of those products it's easily missed when you're patching. So double check whatever psych cell device you have, whether or not it's up to date and patched. And Google improved DNS over HTTPS in Android by adding DNS over HTTP3 to the list of supported options. HTTP3, it's based on the Quick protocol, so it's running over UDP, not like older version of, T of HTTP over TCP. The use of HTTP3 in general is something that you should be concerned about. It poses new risks for data exfiltration. Many of these proxy-based decryption appliances aren't necessarily ready for HTTP3. So you may have some blind spots there, regardless of whether it's now being used for DNS. You can block a quick the underlying protocol here by blocking UDP over port 443, but well, like anything, it can be used over other ports. Well, and uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and uh, talk to you again tomorrow.